Three. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the inaugural episode. Well, the third episode that we shot, but the first episode is making it uh, basically out the files, out the secret files, man. Um, mm-hmm. Heavy Thoughts is a podcast where, you know, your boy, John Seaton, the leader of the Big Boy Council, uh, we just, we come on and you know, I bring the people who are either impactful towards me or who, you know, I admire in their in their chase for, you know, excellence. Uh, so it's just a good place for all of us to to come together and enjoy ourselves. So I'll let you, I'll let both you guys introduce yourselves and, you know, basically, who are we and what the hell are we doing here today, man? Go ahead, Dwayne. All right, man, I appreciate it. So first, appreciate you having me on. My name is Dwayne Carter. Hell yeah. Uh, currently a football player at Duke University. You know, I got one more season and then hopefully, you know, on the next level. That's a goal. I'm originally from uh, Columbus, Ohio, a small suburb called Pickerington. Uh, you know, that name gets a lot of laughs at a lot of people. But uh, it's a good little place. And, yeah, I'm a psych major, education minor, theater minor as well. So we'll see where that takes me. Oh, snap. A little acting gig off real. Oh, no, goodness. A little, bit, a little bit. A little bit. How we doing, ladies and gentlemen? Ian Westbrook. Uh, I'm just a regular NARP, former football player at Elon, North Carolina. Still a student uh, pursuing a marketing and finance major. And uh, just a sophomore, glad to be here. Appreciate you having me, John C. Hell yeah, bro. Ian's my co-host, my dog, my brother, man. You know, got to got to uh, share some some really impactful conversations when he first got on campus. So you know, it's good to good to really try to to pass on what I've learned from here, and uh, you know, really just just give whatever whatever I can to the next generation. You feel me? So okay, hey man, the one constant between the three of us, huh. we all know, college football. At one point or another, man, you feel me? That it's a it's a brotherhood like no other. Nah, no cap. You know what I mean? The 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 these are the people that you struggle with, and the people that you know you go through it with, damn near every day for yeah, a, yeah. a good chunk of your life. Nah, that's facts. You feel me, man? It's just it's it's crazy to you know have that group of people. And I think it's one of the best things about college football is that later in life, that group of people that you struggle with, these are always, you know, guys that you can go back to at any time, any given time. At least for me, you know, any of my teammates, whenever, you know, if they ever need anything or if if if, it really, if life ever get rough, you know, like they got my number and, and, and it's just that's the way it is. And that's what that that shared struggle, I feel like, really does to you. Mm-hmm. No, 100%. And, like, we talked about it a little bit earlier before we even started, but, like, I saw a TikTok the other day. You know, I love to get credit. I forget who made it. Otherwise, I get the credit. But it was a TikTok that said, I guess, crazy, like, your strongest group of friends is going to be, like, guys who all got recruited to the same school. Yeah. Like, guys you never knew beforehand. Like, kind of, you know, same guys that coaches had vision for to play football at their school. Nothing else. And, like, now, like you said, like, brotherhood, lifelong friends. Like, same thing with mine. Like, the guys came before me. Guys came after. Like, we all still tapped in. Everybody's in different walks of life, and like, right? It's just crazy. It's just different. You don't know unless you experience. Right? Absolutely. But you, you a leader, yo, you know, in your whole, in your whole way, man. You know, team captain. You feel me, Duke you know, On the D on five. for real, Duke it's Power five. five. Playing interior D line as a team captain. That's a big deal, man. Like that's that's, that's crazy. It. No, I appreciate it. It's cool. It is cool. So um, it'll be my actually. I'm not trying to flex, I swear. Yeah, it'll be my third year as, oh, a, there you as go. a captain there you at go. Duke. So hell yeah. And I actually didn't know it's like I'm the first ever three time captain in the school history. Word. So like it's pretty cool to know like kind of I leave my mark on the school in some way. Especially because, you know, the first couple of years people gonna hate Duke has a football team, whatever. Yeah. First couple of years didn't go too well, but the last year we bought out for real. So we turned it up and like it's just cool to know like I made an impact on that. Not only that, but like my teammates really believe me for for the last couple of years. Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah. Definitely all love from me. I'm a UNC fan, so you know, it might be a little bit of bad blood. But yeah, man, I think I think one thing good about football is just not just college football, football in general. It brings everybody together. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like you put different guys of different races and ethnicities, whatever. It doesn't matter. Like they're all gonna come together and show love. And I have many friends that uh, I still talk to to this day from Pee Wee football. So you know what I'm saying? Like real. you know. Yeah doesn't just take you to get to this level to to have the game, you know, leave its mark on you. So, That's yeah. Thanks, bro. Yeah, man. The mark, the mark the game leaves, bro, could be yeah. physical, could be mental, <laughs> man. Like, yeah, we all got scars from this game. And, yep. you know, we've all, we've all had to go through some shit to be real good at this game. You know what I mean? So, like. That's it. To be able to sit down and reflect 
is always it, it's rare for us because we're always so go go go. But when you really think about like, no matter where you're at, no matter how long that you played for, no matter you know what happened, if you stepped in them doors as a college football player and you made it through a season, there are so many lessons that like can't be taught anywhere okay. else. That's so true. Now that's facts and like football, like. Everybody says, like, you just run, hit, catch. But, like, that's for those who really don't understand the game, for real. Like I say, like, you learn your foundation, life lessons, lifelong friends, relationships. You learn how to be criticized. You learn how to criticize. You learn how to take. It's just, you just, it's just so much that teach you in the game ball. And, like you said, like, I think the best thing about it is you go through it with others. Like, you're never alone, for real. Right. So, you talk about the brotherhood. Like, that's really where it's made. Like, everybody sees this stuff on Saturdays, but they don't see the mat drills. Yeah. They don't see the one's hands. They don't see the the weights lifted. They don't see the, the throwing up, the sweating, the running. Like everything really goes into it for real. For sure. I wouldn't like, I wouldn't say it's just the field too though. It's the locker room. Okay. You know? Okay. Meeting rooms. You're yeah. there all day during you know fall camp. It can be brutal, man. But you know nah, for real. <laughs> and we we get ready to head into fall <laughs> camp. Right around That's the, the luck to you guys. Man. It's looming. It's looming like like a storm on the horizon, but but it rains gold, you know what yeah. I like. It, it's fun, but you know it's gonna get hectic. Man. Like, you got any stories? Any any training camp files? Any 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 crazy times from camp? Like, even could be in the middle of practice. Look, don't even matter. So I will say, my freshman year, mm. uh, my first camp ever. You know, freshman year, like you going in, anxiety's high. Oh yeah, tensions are high. Like for sure. And you know how to play the game of ball, but you really don't know how to play it at that speed. For sure. So, <laughs> funny story is, first practice ever. His career, uh, we had a fifth year senior that was ended up being late, mm. and another one that was later hurt or something, so he wasn't practicing first practice. So, me, I got moved up from fourth or fifth on the depth chart to first that day, right? Mm. So, yeah, you was a one day one, I, I was day one, right? So, we out there first practice, you know, it's helmets, right? Helmets and shirts, whatever, dress absolutely. Wear. So, like, you know, in tempo, like in practice for high school, like that tempo, like you basically walk through for real, but so, you know, college, everybody knows college is like. It's that same tempo every single time. It's planned out. Practice is planned out to the minute. Bro, so like 18-year-old Wayne like didn't know that. Yeah. Right? So <laughs> I'm going to up and get started no line. I'm probably in the shade, one technique. I'm going to get started in center. When I tell you I got a double team, I got driven 20 yards. Oh, my goodness. Back in the end zone, the first play of my college career. That's the first play of my college career. Set the tone. Set the tone. Set the tone welcome to team. the – welcome to – NCAA. Welcome to NCAA, <laughs> bro. Like, Five. grown men, yeah, right? So. And it's funny, you look back, like, he's fifth and sixth year senior, so, like, I'm 18, they're, like, 23, 24. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's some grown men, and it's funny, like, now I'm in that spot, too, but, like, just thinking back, I'm like, but that was the first time I called a career, and it couldn't have been any worse. That, and, as you would expect, practice sucked. <laughs> the rest the of the whole day. thing. I was tired, I was getting ragged on. <laughs> that's like, all you're whatever. thinking about, too, the whole time. Right, and literally, that's all, all you're thinking about. And you jogging on the field, they're looking at you, like, side eyes, I'm like, all right, bro, like, whatever. Everybody laughing, but... That's kind of started my career, and you know that kind of set the tone for <laughs> what is college football now. From the so, yeah. so, so, I feel we all had a welcome to the NCAA moment. I think mine was, you know, not my first college practice, but my first full pad practice. Yeah, man, let me tell you something. I was used to lining up against, you know, in the three tech and getting uh, that just drive, you know, post on the combo, yeah. down block from the tackle. You know, both of them dudes be like, yeah. 275 on a good day, <laughs> 285 on a real good day. Yeah, you know, man. This guy by the name of Cooper Cromer. That's my dog. <laughs> Shout out to Coop. He about six, seven, six, eight, 335. I forget who the guard. He was playing tackle. I forget who the guard was across from me, but he wasn't no slouch either. Man, I took that the first the first college combo block that I ever took, mm-hmm. bro. Mm-hmm. When I tell you that, like, I did a 90-90. I did a 90-90, so I'm going to put that shit right up on the screen. I did 90-90. I was sitting my, my ass was on Bruh, dirt, boy. I'm knowing. Terrible. Those trenches. Oh, absolutely. We, it, talk, it, we talked about the trenches. It get real in them A-gaps. War. It, 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 the reason they call it trenches, man. Oh, for sure. Yeah. If you know, you know. That, that's all I got to say. If you know, you know. Glad I played outside of it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I get near, I don't want no part of it. Nah, for sure. Me in those trenches. Hell yeah. Right. Hey, it's funny, bro. College football A-gap. Is the most violent single point oh, yeah. for miles around any oh, game. Yeah. Unless you're playing on like Patterson, New Jersey. But then it, you got bigger things to worry about. <laughs> like, you know what I mean, though? Yeah, for sure, for sure. 
Bro, you know, it's funny. So, uh, my position coach, Ben Albert, well, he's not my position coach. He might coach at UMass now. He's yeah. from Patterson. Mm. I don't think I ever told you that. But he always talk about the bare knuckle brawls and the yeah. fights they used to have. Like, he said yeah, it's real yeah. deal up there. Nah, it's, it's crazy. Like, I played I played it. I forget what high school it was, but it was the one that Lean On Me was about. I forget what the name of it is. Forgive me. But it was, man, you look off to the side, and there's burnt out crack houses, like, that's real. cross the fence. for. But... It's it's crazy to see just how close the game is to all different kinds of communities. Cause I okay. played I played games in you know places where I'm looking at the houses around the state and be like, why are we here? We need we need to go make some money. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, and, That's real. And and there's also games I play where it's like, damn, like I feel for the people who got like I feel for y'all after you step off this field. Yeah, you know what I mean, bro. It's crazy. That's all they got, and I think that just speaks to another aspect of the locker room. Yeah, Cause yeah. like it's crazy. Like I'm at Duke, right? And you know everybody thinks of Duke. Like Duke first is elite, primarily white institution. So first of all, we stick out anyway. For sure. Being, I always joke like we were like 75 percent of the black population at Duke's football team. Man, we be saying the same thing. I'm already know. <laughs> so it's, private school, yeah. it's just crazy though because like we got guys come from no money. Guys come from a lot of money. Middle class, middle upper class, middle lower class. Like crazy. All walks of life. People, two parents, one parent, no parents. Like. And it's just crazy. Like, everybody comes together for one purpose. And I think that just also speaks to the beauty of the sport, man. Like, sure. And that's, we have a coach uh, by the name of Trooper Taylor. He's like, the reason I love the game and I've been around this game so long is because between those two white lines, like, that's the only place everything's even. Absolutely. Like, you don't have no money, nothing else. Like, it's mono, you mono, man, on man. Now, you get a bad ref from here and there, like, to mess stuff up. But all the other factors, like, it's just real, man. Like you said, it's a beautiful game. For real. Football is that great equalizer. Yeah, that's it. That's the that's the best part about the game itself. Now the worst part about the game is when them refs do be bullshit. I'm not gonna right. lie, <laughs> but we not but, gonna get into it. But we not gonna get it. Nah, yeah, yeah, nah. Okay. Hey man, speaking of speaking of game day, I guess. Mm. What you be wearing on game day? I know you missed the you missed the swag man when it comes to do I be wearing on putting game. that on, bro? What's your thought process? All right, so let me run y'all through this. All right, so. One, as a D lineman, lineman in general, I'd be like, bro, y'all really don't have no drip. Like, you know, skilled guys get the sleeves, the bands, the visors, the gloves, like low cleats. Like, all our cleats are always like big, bulky, stuff like that. Whatever. Absolutely. So, find a, made a way, find a way to make it work. Excuse me. So, I always start off with some on the legs. Well, I got sleeve on, bands on. Uh, I just bought these cut or the cut football socks. So, you know, the little scrunchy ones. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah. actually fit big dude legs. Like, you know, usually you buy some socks, like soccer socks, they a little, a little tight. I but, mean, like, I mean, they it's it's just like you ain't got no scrunch. Right. Not even, not even one bit. You ain't follow them things. It looks on. like you got some tube socks for real. Yeah, yeah. But, hey, shout out Cut. That, y'all did that for real <laughs> with the little, uh, the little scrunch socks. So, I bought some of them. And I always got some on the arm, right? So, I either go sleeve, double bands, mm. wrist tape. We got these little, uh, the wrist braces too. Mm. Like obviously, you know, you're wearing for safety, whatever. Yeah, you're wearing for drip. That's really what it is. But at the end of the day, like, I always got some of my legs and some of my arms. So, like, we go socks, long socks. And recently, what I've been doing, I'll spat a little bit too on the cleats. So, you know, I go a little bit mismatch here or there. I do a lot of little guy stuff on a big guy that looks good, mm. if that makes sense. Mm. I feel like that's the best way to put it. The best way to have that lineman drip, for one, is to really get in the gym, really get in the That kitchen. is facts. Like you could be two ninety, but you could look good in your uniform at two ninety. Hundred percent. I mean, it's facts. For me, with my drip, I don't like nothing on my legs, which is Word. crazy. Like whenever I got sleeves on, with like them tights. If the tights go like really, if the tights are past like what compression shorts are, I feel like I don't get off the ball as well. Word. You know what I mean? But that's also probably because that's probably because you know y'all got y'all got a certain sponsor for your school. We got one for ours, man. <laughs> but I just like even in my like personal preference. There, like, it comes down to the material and being as fast as I possibly can. Like, I don't even wear. I put all my pads in my pants just so I can have that little fraction of a millisecond. Oh, because that's definitely. I'm also slow, you know. Like in comparison to a lot of like them crazy, super twitchy fast pass rushers, like I'm not the fastest guy in the world. So I gotta at least feel free so I can really play free. Okay, but I'm a big turf tape guy. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, turf tape and I eye like black tape. with the sleeveless hoodie. I'm a man. I'm you know, a fan. Cool. I'm a fan. I'm cool with it. You feel me? Wrist tape. You feel me? Got the gloves on. 
And then I put, I'll wear the scrunch socks too. Oh yeah. But I'll scrunch them down like kind of far so they really scrunched. Yeah. And then I'll put the spat and have like the scrunch coming out the top of the spat. Well, that's kind of hard. You feel dude. me? You feel me, dog? Yo. That, oh. Man, yeah, that's that's, that's might, my little look. I'm about to step in. I might, man. might see that week one. I'm not. What's gonna up? Care. Yeah, you hey, might see hey. week one. I can't. We, we got we got a, we got a match week one a little collab IG post from both the dubs. Don't right care. That'd be crazy. Yo. That'd be crazy. But like, yeah, man, I think lineman drip is something that it, it, it takes a lot of creativity because 100. Most of the stuff that the skills wear. Man, by the time you get to the second drive of the game, it's either oh, not where it was before, it's, it's flipped completely around, it's covered in mud, somebody bled all over it. Like, five plays in. That is facts, bro. That's why I'm like, I always, so I'll give you another little key that I use. Tight. Free game, Word. I'm going to look for that camera. Mm. 100%. Like, you know, everybody needs yeah. the action shots, of course. But pregame, for that reason you just said, I will find that camera every mm. single time. Because one, like you said, after that first two plays, like my jersey is up over my pads. For sure. Twisted. Right. And I like to wear the baggy t shirt hanging out too a little bit. It got ripped off. Gets ripped off. <laughs> Bruh. Like you just can't win. So I'm saying sure. pre game, look, for our listening. Pre game, find that camera. Obviously, be focused about the game. Be focused on the game, of course. But you gotta find the camera. You got you got an hour, you out there warming up. You definitely got 20 seconds to look around and find a camera. No cap. Just don't get caught. Hey, that's the main thing. No <laughs> that's the main thing. Uh, yeah, hell yeah. Ian. Man, practice how you play. All mm. I do is wrist tape. Word. Mm. And I, I mean, I wear my scrunchy socks, but that's about it. There was a few times where I wore turf tape in high school. Wasn't fucking with it. I don't like Word. the way I don't like the way it holds on. Like it feels like it's tight on my arm. I don't, I don't know. I just don't. I, I stretch out that. the same way, for sure. and then when sure. it's really cold, I rarely ever wear a long sleeve. I can't. You can't fumble yeah, you the ball. Can't. You can't do that. Can't fumble no, the ball. Okay. Mm-hmm. You, know? you wear sleeves and you fumble. They're gonna blame it on the sleeves every nah, time. I'm still getting for cut sure. off. Yeah, Absolutely. you get cut off immediately. Get so cut off. yeah, cut. practice how you play. So I'll tell you one thing. I respect that. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing. No sleeves on the line of scrimmage, bro. Mm. I can't like. Nope. Yeah, I can't I get with it. I can't yeah. get with sleeves on the line of scrimmage, and it's almost more acceptable to wear long sleeves playing on the line when it's warm out. It's almost more acceptable because if it's cold outside, I feel like I feel like there's like some some I don't know if it's just me being an asshole, <laughs> but like if it's cold outside, I'm not wearing sleeves during the game. No, like, like it sends a message to the dude who's lining up across from me, getting ready to take my head off, that I'm not as much of a man as he is. That and that's just facts. how it is. That's facts. Cause that, I mean, that's half of the game, though. It's mental warfare. For sure. No long sleeve shirts, I should say. So like, Single arm sleeve is okay. So if I come out, I will say, if I come out, I see O lineman with sleeves on. Oh, it's up. Like it's over. With. It's up for him. Like I'm like, oh yeah, easy dub. Because I just know, like you gotta make them think like I'm tougher than you. And once you think that, it's hard to be stopped. So. That's hard a good to, point. Hard to stop a confident man. Oh, there you, you go. I mean, even harder to stop a confident prepared man. And if you got sleeves on playing O line, and you ain't do your homework, mm-hmm. sorry, bro. It's, it's gonna be rough. What's up? Especially oh, when you play yeah. against DC. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. Man. Man. So y'all just had y'all media day. We did. I got we mine did. tomorrow. How was yours, bro? Oh, my my was great. I will say. I knew it was my last one, Word. so I had to go out with a bang. Mm-hmm. So, first of all, you want to see some flicks, tap it on the ground, and Twitter, and TikTok. I put them on everywhere. But, you feel me? So, the way I went around this media day, I said, I'm going to go out with a bang. And we talk about big guys not being able to really do a lot with it. So, what better way to then do other positions? Mm-hmm. So, my photo shoot was sitting around running back poses, quarterback poses, receiver poses. Like, I'm having teammates throw the ball on my shoulder. I'm catching fade balls, like. I'm laying out like action shots, like I was not playing. Hell no. Nah. You know, I had a little person eye in there, a little, a little misunderstood flick. Like shout out Drewski, you know, like stuff, stuff, stuff like that, bro. So like, I'm not gonna lie, like I encourage you to go ahead and tap into some of them. Just have fun with it, man. Just have fun, creative. With it, bro. Like it's the last one. Gotta be it, bro. Like you don't need to be in the three point stance. Like get to sweating, <laughs> get to sweating, bro. For sure. Bro, they had me put a helmet on, bro. I'm in there sweating. I'm like, bro, no. 
So I had to make sure I took all the good picks first. Nah, for real. And then. They put the helmet on. Yeah, the good picks got to come first. The good flicks got to come Every time. Because the hair going to be mm-hmm. cooked like. But y'all, Especially me. I got to put know, my man. hair. I put my hair in a bun before I put it in the helmet. Because, like, I got so much hair that, like, it come out the back. But, like. Playing D line, I'm not trying to give nobody nothing to like they grab you. Yeah. I mean, bro, man. So if I get pulled down, if, if somebody grabs the back of my hair and pulls me down, I'm getting up and swinging. Oh, that's fighting. Like that's fighting on friends. So why not just get rid of the whole thing in general? You feel that's me? So that's why I wrap my hair up before I put it before I put the helmet on. But I'm gonna have Makes to do sense. that tomorrow, and I gotta get all the good ones before I do that. But you got mind to keep the helmet off. For sure. The first half, absolutely. Just, got it away from yeah. the helmet. Once the helmet go on, it stay on. Yeah, just yeah. like in practice, for real. Bro, that's literally it. I don't take, bro. I do not take my helmet off and practice at all, bro. Because once it's set from all the hits, like the hits set it right, that's in my facts. opinion. 100%. Like when you play O line or D line, your helmet don't feel right until you, you like hit. five, 10 hits in practice. Because okay. it, it, you like, your cranium just settles in right. the damn helmet. I'm, I'm so serious. Like, that's real. Like, it's something like, it sound you, like CTE. Do, you know, you know. Hopefully, not hopefully too not. Much. Not too not, much. You feel me? <laughs> but that's real though, because like even in warmers, so I put my helmet on, my head start hurting. Yeah, or that first rep of team is, and you good. Like, once, you I, good. once I sweat, I'm good. Mm. Once I got, I got to spray water on my head usually. Or I put a helmet on. Hell yeah! I've seen some of my teammates do that too. Yeah, though. you gotta put, you gotta have something like yeah, slick it on. But to put my hair, to put my hair up in like the bun before I put my helmet on, I gotta like. Stick my head under the sink. I'm under the faucet, like, oh, bro, come on, dog. <laughs> y'all, y'all have any helmets that you hate wearing that are like that hurt more than the other ones? So I don't like. Well, I wear F7. A shot F7. Right. They get to choose their helmet, though. You get to choose your helmet. Yeah. Yeah. They get to choose them. So like, we got we got a couple of them, and so like, like so I wear a shot F7. I wore it in high school. Mm-hmm. So that's really the reason I wear it. Yeah. So like a lot of people wear it. Was it the Revo Speeds with the zip ties and stuff? I tried so, it when I first got to school, and then like we talk about. You don't like taking your helmet off during practice, whatever. So I had to take my helmet off like the first practice for some, and I couldn't get the zip tie. Mm. I tell you, I changed my helmet so fast. <laughs> but I was so hot, bro. I'm in there sweating, mad. Like somebody kept this shit off. Like, <laughs> like bro, bro, I was mad, bro. Like couldn't even get the zip tie. Now I was like, yeah, I'm good. So I went back to the F7. Mm. So I'm not a big Rebel Speed fan. Like Word. I don't know though. I'm a Speed Flex guy for sure. That, that's. I love you more speed flex. Yeah, yeah, that's the only one. Like, I bought one for high school, bro. Yeah, yeah, like, cause I mean, it was either that or the bucket. Yeah, I'm not wearing the shut. And I'm not wearing. Shut, I'm uh, not wearing bucket. the old shut. Air XP had me looking like I just started Road to Glory in NCAA 14, and and I ain't touched a single stick yet. I'm still Goodbye. Joe Random, my running back or whatever. You feel me? Like, bucket is not it, bro. Can't absolutely not. Not it. Absolutely not. That's funny. Nah, no that brings back memories though. For sure, for sure. And just and just and man, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I gotta go all out on the drip this year. Like every game might have to be something got different. To. It might have to be something different. Got to. Like only you wear the visor. I mean, I can. not Well, not a tenant one. I mean, I'm not gonna wear a tenant visor pregame. That's 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 doing That'd be crazy. Like, yeah, that'd like be I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not good enough at football to wear a tenant visor pregame. Would, like you gotta be, crazy. you gotta be like Ed Oliver, like yeah. when he was in Houston to wear a tenant visor pregame, bro. Like you gotta be first round lock. You feel me? Like you know, they cutting the hedges outside. If you can hear it, I apologize. I don't know if you can or not, but just a word of warning. Um, but yeah, man, moving forward, for real, you know, I. I like having this group of us at this table because it really shows a lot of different goals that we all have from football. Okay. You know what I mean? We all fall in a, in a, in a, in, in different, in mm-hmm. different places. And as, as the personal goals that we have for where the game could take us. And that's another thing that's really good about a game, man. No okay. cap. You can have so many different goals in the game and, you know, people might judge you for them, but at the end of the day, like whatever you want to be in this game is what you're going to be. You know, we got Mr. First Round Talent right here. You feel me? He been he, it's gonna be draft day. He's gonna be there in a the suit and I'm gonna be watching on my TV and my feet kicked up. <laughs> Climbing. Me and Ian gonna be watching it together for real. <laughs> Post it. Hell yeah. But like yeah. just tell in 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 the in the loftiest way possible, because I know you're gonna try to be humble. I know you. You're gonna try to be humble how you explain your goals in the loftiest way possible and in the most honest and open way possible. Where do you want this game to take you? 
Yeah, so 100%. So first, like, obviously the league, that's, that's always been the goal. Like, sure. since I came up, me and the young, and like, I want to play in the NFL. I want to play in the NFL. Like, I've been surrounded by ball my whole life. Like, that's always been, like, it was either going to be baseball or football. Absolutely. It was soccer at first. You know, I, I gained a couple pounds. <laughs> but, <laughs> so that dream went out the window. But for sure. football, I want to go to the league, right? So knowing, like, it's actually attainable now. It's reachable. Mm. As long as I do what I got to do and keep producing, working hard, you know, just doing everything the right way. For sure. I got a shot, right? So then, honestly, after ball, though, like you said, like, it's all different assets. But one of the reasons I came to Duke was because of all the things outside of ball. Word. So it's like academically, like, the way they preach it, is it's a forty year decision, not a forty it's a forty year decision, excuse me, not a four year decision. For sure. So like and that's real. You know, you a kid, like you sixteen, seventeen year recruiter, you're not thinking nothing about that. Like you like, oh yeah, whatever. Like I just know it's a good school. But like coming up through there, like I done made some connections with administration, trustees, like just all these different powerful people and real genuine relationships though. Yeah. That's what I feel like is really what's most important, right? So just knowing like after I'm done playing ball, even while I'm playing ball, whenever that is, like I'm good. Right? 100%. Because I did the work. Um, I made the relationships, and I know, like, there's always something outside of ball for me. Like, you know, they talk about more than an athlete, and it's just real. That's a real thing because you hear about all these statistics about student athletes, one, having imposter syndrome and stuff after being done playing their ball. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's like a whole different life. Like, you can probably speak to that for real. Like, the difference about playing ball and not playing ball no more, being in school, stuff like that, bro. I would say one thing, man. The amount of support you get being a collegiate athlete in general, football player, wherever you play, women's basketball, anything, go all across the board. They got student advisors and, I mean, uh, class advisors and uh, career advisors and all these different things. Although, I mean, I wasn't in there for too long, but I caught a glimpse of it, right? For sure. I mean, they're, they're one of the only reasons I survived. I, I don't know if I would have got A's and B's if I didn't have my career advisor in me every day saying, do this, make sure you have this done, and sending emails for me, hey, helping out with this. So it's the it's the amount of support you get. I think that really helps a student athlete get through the four years, man. It's, it's stressful. So, yeah. Yeah, it definitely is stressful, bro. Yeah. Like, the, coming home from practice at, like, 7, 8 o'clock at night. Yeah. And realizing, like, damn, bro, I got a test tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I ain't even studied for it yet. Cause I've been doing homework for this other class for my two hours of free time I got before I got to go to bed. Like, right. you want to talk about stress? Yeah. College football will, will teach you a thing or two about stress yeah. and like just having those hours of your day blocked out. Like you got yeah. something to do every single day for at least you know Next. off season at least two three hours. No cap. No. In season, shit. For real eight. So I mean, we'd be at the facility, get there at noon, don't leave till 7, 30, 8 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Tired, you got to figure out a way. Yeah. But that prepares you so much for life, man. No, that's facts, man. It's like, and that's funny because, like, you know, student athletes, a lot of times we don't get a chance to do a lot of the internships. For sure. Power searches, like, other people get to do. So, it's funny. I was talking to actually one of my career advisors mm. and talking about how to actually work your resume, right? And, like, not like actually lie on it, but like true, genuine stuff, time management, teamwork, cooperation, Absolutely. like leadership, like, and all the skills that we actually possess. But we don't think that way because we do this. Like, literally, yeah. it's just like something that's ingrained in us. Like, we you just do it consistently. That's yeah. facts. And you don't realize it's so like, I sat down with her and she was like, all right, well, you do this. Like, don't you do this? Like, I'm like, oh, wow. So I was able to fill out my whole resume based off of just literally my leadership and soft skills that I've got gained from football. Nah, yeah, for sure. It's crazy. For sure. It's uh, that, that, you know, being an athlete with the work ethic, jobs will hire you on the spot. Okay. Knowing that you played a sport in college. I mean, even in high school too, but especially college. If they know you went through four years of that, some would consider hell, you know what I'm saying? Some people would consider, <laughs> no care, saying? No care, no care. And they will realize that, that you're you're a good worker. You have work ethic, you know, you will show up on time, you'll get things done, stuff like that. So For sure. Yeah. For sure. That's facts, man. And that education too is crazy though. Being able to balance a college education with with all that, man, that's wild. No cap. Speaking of education. Mm. What do you what do you 
What you got? What you got to say about this, man? That was one. Of, that was one of the pillars that we talked about it earlier did. today. It one did. Of the pillars we talked about. So like, what? It's one of my pillars, man. Absolutely. So, Go into it. Um, education for me. Like I kind of spoke to a little bit already. Like one of the main reasons I came to Duke. So coming up, like I was a kid. Like I wasn't allowed outside to like <laughs> my mom. I had my homework done. Like all that stuff. Like yeah. she didn't care what it was. Like you get back from practice. Like you doing that homework. Like. There's so many nights I used to be at the kitchen table, sleep, like food next to me on my book. I had to finish my work. You know yep, what I'm saying? Like, it's just stuff like sure. that. So, like, kind of something that's been ingrained in me. And then coming up, like, both my parents, they kind of worked at this, um, I don't know how to call it, but it was called National Center for Urban Solutions coming up. Word. And it was, they did a whole bunch of stuff. But the main thing I took away, was, um, it was like an after-school program type of thing and tutoring mentor program for mm-hmm. inner-city youth. Right, so we had athletes come through there. Like, I grew up around him, so you guys may know Trey Burke. Yeah. Hooper. I, I watched him hit his game winning shot at Michigan when I was on a cruise in, like, fifth grade. I, rem- I remember that so vividly. Bro. That's crazy. And it was, like, one in the morning. It was cr- it was nuts. That, that was That's wild. Crazy. It was on spring break. Right. That's so dope because, like, Trey Burke and uh, Jerry Selinger were kind of like the two main athletes coming up, and they were a part of the program, too. Mm. That's one thing about Columbus and the Pickering area, like we're all connected. So a lot of yeah. we had a lot of athletes come through there, but they were one of the ones. So I had to see them coming up. Like I saw my dad taking kids to football camps, and like I'm running around Ohio State's indoor facility at the camp, like just immersed in the culture, right? So when I say education, education can mean many things. It doesn't just mean like we're at the table, like reading notes, taking notes, studying, doing whatever. Like like education is such a broad umbrella, and that's kind of yeah. why I put it for me. That's kind of the path I see myself going down whether it's teaching, um, being administration, but like, you know, my long time goal, hopefully be financially stable enough, wealthy enough to kind of open my own boys and girls club, YMCA type of thing I described, right? Word. And kind of be that person that you're missing, right? So as an uncle, father figure, um, support, just a friend in that aspect. So like, that's kind of like been like my goal since what? Since I really started school, like 2020 for real. Yeah. So what's like, what's kind of led you to, to that thought process and wanting to do that? What was the source to, like, you know, your motivation to go yeah. do that? Because helping others, I know when, when people want to help others, it's usually because they got through something themselves. You know, is there is there – what's just your reasoning that, that makes you so passionate about providing that to someone who doesn't have it? No, that's a good question. So, um, started, like I said, 2020. Oh, uh, you go through pandemic, uh, yeah. social justice movement, civil rights movement, like – all these different things, right? And kind of the main thing that kind of really empowered me to really look into education was George Floyd, right? The case, right? So that happens. Um, rest in peace, of course. And I realized how much history I don't know about black people, about America, Word. about stuff in general. I got you. And that kind of fueled me to start down that path, right? Mm-hmm. So then I go read stuff. I'm watching documentaries, um, books, articles, like I said, talking to different professors, then I started gearing my education toward that. So I'm taking African-American studies classes, um, psychology classes, um, different history classes, reading classes. I've taken, like, all the above. And that's, yeah. that's pretty cool, but I do you can do that. And it's kind of just drove me to, like, want to be able to share that, right? And also realize how much I can impact on this world. For sure. Because in one of my classes, we had to take a uh, serving lear- service learning thing. So, like, I was, like, tutoring, like, middle school. Like, yeah. fifth and sixth graders, I think it was. And, like, just the impact I had on them kind of transpired. So then from that point on, like, I've done it almost every year I've been to school. Mm. I worked as a TA for middle school, like, tutoring, <coughs> after school programs, whatever it may be. And that's kind of, like, my passion, my drive now. Because I came Absolutely. into school thinking I was going to be a physical therapist. So I took that first class. <laughs> and that first test, well, I got, like, a 41%. I said, well, I almost cried. He said, hell no, I'm done. I'm, I'm switching out of this. Yo, yo. <laughs> yeah. nah, That's what it was. Sure. God had a bigger plan for me. I think he helped me see it through, obviously, Absolutely. unfortunate circumstances. Yeah, man. Hey, man, look. You know, anybody who wants to provide that help towards the youth and uplifting our community and just uplifting communities, when you start at the root up, like just – the root of everything and, and, you know, raising people right and just, you know, raising them to be good overall people, man. That's, 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 all, that's all we can ask for, bro. That's all we can ask for, man. So you're doing a lot of good there, bro. And I appreciate like, like even like the future parent in me years <laughs> down the line appreciates the work that you're putting in like today. You I know appreciate what I mean, it, bro. For sure, man. And, and you know, I guess, I guess speaking of the future, family comes into play. Family comes into play, man. There's a, 
there's a there's a ton of importance that we place on it. We touched on it before with, you know, how football it leads you to your second family. It leads okay. you to your family outside your bloodline. But there's definitely importances in both. You know what I mean? So that's facts. There's so many different dynamics and there are so many different ways to, you know, interact within a family or to or to or to create one in a way. Yeah. Whether that's biologically or just through the shared experiences that we okay. have. That's real, bro. Cause like like you said, like great, not sitting necessarily, you know, my mom gonna watch this probably not. I ain't creating no family. Look, no, not that. <laughs> no, not Ooh, real. Look. Not yet. But like outside of ball, like meet other people that sure. aren't on the team. So I have a whole nother family. Well, there's people on other sports teams, um, people on campus that I met that don't play sports. And just, like I said, administrators, teachers, faculty that I've grown to know, and they've grown to know me and support me in all my endeavors. So I know it's just like I have people I can count on for outside of family, football, and just just I have a different support system everywhere. I think that's also unique about the college experience because, like, <laughs> you can go one place, a whole group of people, and be all right. You go another place, a different group of people, and be all right. Yeah, like, yeah. you got all these different groups for real. But they all, like, intermingle in a way. Okay. And especially when it's around a football team and you see how each personality branches out into a different oh, yeah. group of people, you know. Sorry, you got kids that are in the game and you got kids that, you know, that spend their time there. They're into fashion or whatever, bro. But you got so many different interests and people, you know, there's groups created around those interests. And then, like, when you find a way to bring all them groups together and everybody brings something to the table. You got people from different, yeah. you know, social clicks, I guess, in yeah. a way, all sitting at the same table in a conversation, man, that's that's one of the best parts about college football because everybody cracking jokes and everybody sees things a little bit differently. Yeah. And in life, that's what we chase in our in our social circles. We chase people who see things a little bit differently, who can offer different perspectives. But we got that in front of us every day. And sometimes I don't even think that we appreciate it as much as we should. That's facts. As facts, like you said, when it comes together, you know, it's like a big uh Disney crossover episode, no like cap. back in the day. <laughs> no cap, man. No cap, no cap. But just what's the importance of family mean to you guys? You know, I, 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 I've done a lot of speaking, I'm not, yeah. not being the best host as per, as per se, but to like to you guys, what is what is that importance of family? Like, what does that mean to you? I touch on a little bit. You want to start? You know, I'll just say, uh, you know, having, like you said, that support system, mm -hmm. so, wherever you go. When, when you go back home, you know, you got your true family. That's your blood family, absolutely. household family, you should say. You know, when you, when you get that first summer, freshman year, and you don't know who to talk to, it's all new faces. They slowly become your family that when you come yeah. back next August for fall camp, you're, that's your family now. You know what I'm saying? I haven't, you, don't, you don't go back home for three, four months until winter break. So, you know, just having that family wherever you go, like you said, a support system is always nice to have that, man. So. Yeah. yeah. So. That's big facts, bro. That's big facts. Family, like, I think another thing, too, like, I'm blessed with a lot of good coaches around me. Yeah. There's another quote from uh, Coach Troop. Word. He said, he said, you can't love your family in slices, right? You either love them or you don't. Mm. That's like, that's the biggest thing. I think your family, like, they really are your family, blood or not. Like, they love you for who you are. Like negatives, positives, unconditional love. Literally, that's it. That's yeah. the best way to put and that's it. That's something that as men, which is rare. You yeah, know, that's that's rare for us to see as men, and that's that's just how it is in the world. Nobody's going, you know, a lot of a lot of things that you do. Your value is based on what you provide. Your value is based on like what you bring to the table in any sort of situation. My value as a football player is based on how well I get off the ball, how well I get off the block, and how many times I made a tackle. My value that's is. Fair. A student is based on how many questions I get right. But to be able to go home and be like, have somebody like, or just a group of people who love you and care about you for you, you know, even though we all sitting here like, damn, I ain't had this conversation in the grip. But, okay. yeah. but to have that is something that is so valuable in whatever capacity it, 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 it comes in. Because I'll tell you, I teammates from my family because there have been times where I've come home, you know, in the, in, in, just a really shitty situation yeah. and where people are like, you know, they, there's, there's, there's no hesitation for someone to come lend a listening ear or a helping hand. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's, it's, it's a great thing that we're a part of and 
I guess to any of the college athletes watching this, appreciate your damn teammates, man. What the hell? No cap. No cap. For sure, man. Hey. Segwaying on a little bit. Because we've been in here chopping it up. Straight chop. It's on your 40 minute mark. 40 minute mark. We just been in here. Chopping it up, man. Relationships. Every big guy relationship conundrum. Mm. You know what I mean? How. Those big guys who hit me up, they're like, "Hey, bro, I'm trying to get a girl, dog. What do I do?" And I and I and then I sit there and I'm like, "Damn." I look at my girl. I'm like, "How did I do that? <laughs> how how I, how the hell did I do that?" <laughs> you feel me? It's like, man, I don't know. You gotta get lucky. The, the, yeah. the good Lord above gonna have to bless you, my brother. You feel me? <laughs> like, it's gotta like, be luck. Hell, it, 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 some of it gotta be luck, man. Listen, it's hard to find the right one. one. You know what I mean? It's hard to find it, but when you do, that's why. That's what makes it so worth it. You know, can't let go. About. Can't let go. If you think that she's the right one, you just can't. Yeah, that's it is facts. There, and there's no and and when you know she's the right one, there's no room to. Right. You know what I mean? Like that thought wouldn't cross your mind, bro. When I tell you that my girl is the only woman on earth, solid. My girl, the only woman to ever exist. I promise you that. Promise you that though. Nice to have that. She's a fantastic lady. She's gonna be watching this too. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> but like, man, I'm telling you though, like having that is so underrated as well. As a man, as a football player, all of the above. I agree. I agree, man. And that's real. Like you said, mainly, you know, talk about that football player piece, right? So football players, stereotype, label players, hustlers, whatever, running game, everything else. So like being that. It's like, man, like, bro, you really loyal, like you did that and third, but like, like you said, like, when you find the one, it's the one. Yeah. And I've been lucky, bro. Like, I've been kidding with my girl for shoot. Since Adam was eighth, a boy. Since eighth grade. <laughs> Look, since eighth grade, bro. Was that, going 19, on? 19. <laughs> like, True love. Bro, nine me? years, bro. Damn. Nine years. That's, that's my dog. Bro. That's so rare. That's my dog. That might be the first yeah, time yeah. I've heard of that. I've heard like sophomore year high school, but eighth grade, middle eighth school. Grade, bro. Like, you know, eighth grade, it was like some like corny, like probably like, to be honest, like hit me up on kick, like, yep. for <laughs> kids, right? like that's how it started for her. And like, look where we at now. But she, bro, she held her down, but she stays solid. We long distance too. There you go. So she back at home, but like, she don't miss no games. Like ever. two things I can count on and my games. Her and my mama going to be there every single mm. game. Hell yeah. No matter how it, how, what it takes to get there, they're going to be there. For sure. Every single game, whether it's driving after work, flying. Shoot, checking in, holding it down. Like, she making me Easter baskets and stuff. Mm. Like, oh, that's my dog, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. so shout out. Like, she, she probably gonna watch it too. So shout out, you know, shout out my shorty, you know. No more, you know man, you feel me? We just, <laughs> man, it's, it's a lovely, it's a lovely day in this room, man. Smiles on. It must be nice. Man, bro, you man. up next though. But you, you exactly, but you up next. Man. You feel me? But hey, hey, but listen, next, listen, you yeah. at the point. Hey, tap in. Type, you feel me? Instagram, his Instagram be down below. Yeah, 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 I got you. Bow, no. <laughs> but, but listen, bro, it's gonna come to you when you're ready for it, and it's gonna it's, come. And it's gonna come to me when I'm ready. But you're not gonna know that you're ready. That's very true. And she gonna and make you ready. That's she very gonna make true. you ready. You you only ready when you don't know that you're ready. That's I'm not rude. gonna lie. I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm ready. I don't know if I'm ready. And I talk to girls on the side. I lost Snapchat, so that sucked. That was my biggest form. You know, as a millennial, like, Snapchat's one of the biggest form of communication. You but I think it was a beauty at the same oh, time. You know, snap no more? No, it's Snap at love all. That. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. The girl's going to love that. Yeah, you, well, well, the girl's going to love it, but, like, it's it's weird. Like, a lot of the, the women and the actually everybody, boys, girls, anything, like, when you go to somebody and talk to them and you ask for their number, a girl that's my age, she's going to be like, oh, I just gave you my Snap. Yeah, that is yeah. true. I don't have Snapchat. And then, she, then she's like, oh, what? It sparks conversation, but at the same time, it's like, it's just a... It's almost like a, a little social barrier sometimes. It's it's kind of weird to explain, but it's like if you right. meet somebody who doesn't have a social media app, it's like you're meeting a unicorn. Right. No cap. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, no cap rare. Because I can't see you 24 hours a yep. day. I don't know what exactly. I don't know what you're putting out all the time. Yeah. So it makes it's that person fair. almost seem rare. But the beauty of it though is easier to read people off like the way they text. 100 percent You know what I'm saying? 100 percent I mean, it's easy to read on Snapchat too, but like if I text you, you don't you don't like text me back for like the whole day. You leave me on red or something. I'm gonna know that you don't fuck with me. It's okay. Hey, man, I'm just nah, not. I'm hey. just cut it off. It's so hey. much easier to cut it off. It get busy sometimes. Text bro. Message. Get busy. But that's my it, fault. Same time it is. My fault. My fault. Yeah. It's real. It's real. 
That's but, real though, bro. Nah, no cap. But. That is crazy. You don't have snacks. That is funny because like, like you said, no, I'm like, shoot. Everybody got everything. Every, yeah, exactly. Like, and everything is the umbrella. Snapchat, Twitter, Threads, yep. Instagram, whatever else. Like, everybody has everything. But also, like, I think it's pretty dope you don't have it, too. Because, like, especially because girls yeah. on social media be complaining about how guys be using social media. Which yeah. also don't make no sense. But <laughs> that, and, like, that's neither here nor there. Yeah. And regardless, like, too, like, I say, like, bro, like, like John said, you're not going to know you ready. Mm-hmm. Also, like, you got to be the best version of yourself, right? Continue to make yourself the best person you can be every day. Just build. It'll come. And Barry's league just It'll gonna come. come. Like, it's gonna be like, yeah. That's what I've been. That's what I've been doing these past few months. Is really, I mean, you know, you know, I went to the beach, and that whole time it was I was by myself, working, working out, just trying to figure out what I want to do in life. And I think that's that was one of the biggest blessings. I I was living for free, eating for free. My I was living with my grandparents. You know, bro. grandma was making the best food that's every the best so. Best way to live, bro. Shout out so. to her. But uh, yeah, man. So I, that that time period, this last this past summer, that's where I was at. You know, that that was a blessing. I really got to focus on myself, like I said. But uh, back to like the good parts of being single. I can go out and do whatever I want to whenever I want to. You know, <laughs> I true. can. T- and when I go on a trip, I don't gotta be worried about a woman in my phone. It's, it's nice to have that. I love my girl on my phone, boy. Hey, when she when her name pop up, I can skip to my loo, brother. There's nothing you, I can tell them. Look. There's nothing I can tell them. They're, they're gone for look, forever. Oh, we look. I could, I could, I could play hopscotch with with thumbtacks under my feet with a smile on my face. My girl pop name pop up on my phone. For me personally, I think the worst times when I really wish I was taken is at nighttime when I'm on like chilling by myself. When I get done with the day, That's I'm like, I damn, I got I got nobody That's to talk to. So. I don't got nobody hitting my phone. My phone is dry. When you lose Snapchat, your phone's dry. I don't care what nobody says. You want, you have Instagram. That's it. Nobody's DMing you on Instagram. You know? That's real, though. So the phone's just dry. That's the biggest thing. But, you know, it'll come eventually. Just got to keep, just gotta keep looking. Hey, bro. You got to keep That's being you, bro. Exactly. No you got to stay in my own lane. Hell yeah. Yeah. We say it every time. Facts. We say it every time. We say what's up. Yeah. What you on, bro? Shit. Shit. Staying out the way. Yeah. That's it. Way, you feel that's me? it. And that's and that's the way to be. Because mm-hmm. everybody, everybody start to notice as we get older. Speaking of staying out the way, that Friday night, ah, do I want to leave? Ah. What? You be in the bed. If you don't get out of bed at a certain time, it's chopped. Yeah. It's bro, like, it's it's over. like 9, 45. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like. You're like, not out the bed by like 9. Yeah. But For me personally, over. it's right. If I'm not out the it's room. Over. I'm not dressed. Showered, ready? Nah, it's, it's over, bro. Don't worry. Playing the game. It's Playing over, the game, bro. Bro. for real. Because like, you're not gonna, you're not gonna make game. me leave my room at eleven thirty midnight on a Friday. Hell no, nah, Saturday. I'm asleep. Mm-mm. You do gotta have your mind right too. At least for me, like I gotta have my mind the whole day. Like, all right, bro, I'm popping out. Like, yeah, and yeah. that's like it's gotta yeah. be like you gotta I'm be playing. Like, you know, I'm you like, all right, I'm popping out. Whatever, I'm popping. Take out. a nap, two p.m. But like. Dude start calling me 839. Bro, where you at, bro? Uh, Catch up. <laughs> like, can't make it. <laughs> you might pop out here and I'm like, bro, call me if you need a ride, bro. Like, <laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> for real, though, man. That's the nice thing about staying home, though, is you know your people are drunk. I'm not going to say people drink all the time, but we, we get it. Be realistic. Yeah. You know, you got somebody that can go uh, DD and stuff like that. Absolutely. I've been that guy a few times. So. Brotherhood, man. Like, yeah, that's right, right. Right. that's the family like, part of it, man. Brotherhood. They call you whenever they need to. They go out to the bar. I tell them, yo, I'm going to be up till 2 o'clock. If you call me after 2 o'clock, I'm going to be asleep. I'm just going to let you know. So, it's either me or Uber. For sure. Yeah, I ain't going to make you pay no gas money because you're yeah. my dog. Like, no, yeah. But as long as you don't drive, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But see, you get the four thirty, you blow my phone up, and I wake up. You gonna send me five? But I'm gonna need something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I wake up, I'll eat there, bro. It's like, never, it's never too late to go get somebody. But if 100%. I gotta wake up out my sleep, mm. I'm, I'm, Brush I'm, I'm just, I'm just gonna be no music in the car. Bro. <laughs> it's gonna be <laughs> muted. <laughs> ten and two. Ten and two. Seatbelt off. Seatbelt's off. Seatbelt always on. Oh no. Seatbelt's on. on. Ten and two. I'm too tired good. to put it on. Hell yeah. Just Thank you, then. Thank you, bro. It's all good, bro. Yeah, but right. yeah, and then I got you. Good. You straight dog. Yeah, what's up? What's up, man? Good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, man. Hey, man. Oh, we. Nah, but like, but like, no cap though. That's how it be. That's real. Nah, no bullshit, man. Hey, I'm glad. I'm glad that we all just sitting here, you know, chopping up, having like a just a good ass conversation. That's what it's about, bro. Good time. No cap. As we end off our heavy thoughts, man. Our last section of the day, always. 
always has to do with that grub, man. Has to do with that grub. That's it. I was in Raleigh this past weekend. And Word. My, my, uh, my girl was with me. We stayed at uh, the State View, NC State's campus. Yeah. Yeah, bro. That hotel was far. I know. Y'all played them? You stayed there? We, we played play, We played them this year. All right. Well, you probably going to stay there when you play them. It's right on campus. Super nice, bro. So took my girl there, and we went to these small plates restaurants. I started getting into eating, like, small plates and charcuterie and shit. Because, like, uh, bro, I'm telling you, dog. Uh, <laughs> that's, the, that's, my, that's my one thing. Like, the one thing that, you know, that I will needlessly like have a toxic spending habit on is on like charcuterie. Like I'll go, I'll go and get like, it's like that. It's not, no, we're not like toxic, to, a toxic spending habit to me is spending like $200. Well, I'm saying like, is that good though? Like, Bruh, I don't know what it is. There's just something what is about it. it? You said it's like a charcuterie board. It's like the board where that? it's like all the different like meats and cheeses. It's aesthetic. And, like, and like fruits and shit on it's there. Like aesthetically Thanksgiving. Pleasing. Like, bro, it's like aesthetically pleasing. But like, but like something about it like whenever I have it, it it just make me feel like like I'm a high level dude. <laughs> it is true. I can you see know? that. Though. Like I feel I bougie when I eat that shit. What? Like, you know what I mean? I can see that though. Like like it's just something. It's something about it. And now it's 21. You know, go pair it with a nice la- glass of wine. Wine. Pair it with a nice glass of wine. I bro. do that. Tell you, bro. Yeah. Tell you, bro. Chloe got me. Chloe got me right. She got. Me, she wanted to be showing me all the different type of stuff they got. I'm Man, like, oh, funny, bro. shit. I'm like, you mean to tell me I could have, I could have a meal with like thirty different things and feel as full as when I had something with like two things? Sign me up. That's tough, though. I'm gonna have to tap in. Hell yeah, I'll, I'll show you the spot. I'm, I'm gonna have to tap spot. in, bro. You, you know, the it's like 15, 20 minutes away from bro, me. So we, like, hey, next time, next time we out there. Next time we out there. Man, hell yeah. Hit my line. What's it called? I'll Absolutely. slide. What's it called? We went to we went to Barcelona. It was Is one that place what it's was called? called like Barcelona. It was something. I forgot. I could look it up. Hold on. Let me look it up. I don't know. Let me look it up. Hold on. I know you from Durham. You've been in the Dank. <laughs> bro, you know okay. I've been in the Dank. I just had to bro, make sure. You know he just made one in Raleigh? Yeah, now he put it at state. Bro, it's on I the campus. There, but he canceled the one or ca- a close one in Durham. Bro. One in Durham. My brother lives right around the street from there, but uh it's called Barcelona Wine Bar. Barcelona wine. I think I've yeah, heard of that. but it's a wine bar with like small plates. What's that been? Like we just That's had a small crazy. place. I had you feel me ginger ale myself, but man, that charcuterie boy. Ginger ale. What's your what's your what's your favorite soda? Mm. I don't drink soda like I drink water and Gatorade, but I have a soda every once in a while. Well, I love me some Dr Pepper. Ah, that's a good choice. I'm like I'm like you in the sense like water and Gatorade. Not yeah. for sure for the most part, but like I will put down a Sprite. Yeah. Orange fan of gotta, like, be cold, mm, gotta be cold, gotta be cold, like straight crisp, out. Like, I yeah. pop the can, like ice in a cup type of soda. Like, and when I when I drink a soda, I usually don't finish it. Typically, that's just how I am. But that makes sense. Though. But if you throw a Shirley Temple in front of me, oh, it's over. I'll yeah, kill a Shirley Temple. I'll kill three of them. Honestly. Nah, no cap. I had one the other day for the first time. Man, I'm blessed. I mean, I'll, next time you go, you gotta get one. I mean, that's that sounds so young to me. <laughs> I don't drink alcohol, but you know they are good though. You know? Nah, for sure. Um. One thing that, like, I usually can't finish a soda if, like, it's in a can or a bottle or something. It's hard. But if it's a fountain drink. Oh, that's different. Oh, I'm. Mm. Bro, what? It's, it's getting. <laughs> like, I'm. Because <laughs> <laughs> it stays on ice, though. You got ice bro, on the It is a different. Ice. That's a whole different, bro. That can is going to be sitting as room temperature in Man, 10 minutes. Room temperature soda make me want to cry. You no, know, it'll hit those when out the cooler. Like yeah. ju- July Fourth party, cookout, you got a, a mini cookout, yeah. soda, a little mini. We'll do it, bro. Yeah, I think the best, like the best way that soda could be. Listen to this. I'm about to break it down. The best way, the best, the way that you make soda mm. taste the best. You take a styrofoam cup, double it. No, sorry. You fill it with ice, like three fourths of the way with ice. I gotta be a lot of ice in it. Like a restaurant. Hell yeah. You take a fridge cold soda of your choosing. Pour that motherfucker in though. Take a straw and a little plastic top to it. Swirl that bitch around. Then you start drinking that soda. This might be the fat, like fattest shit I ever just described. But like, <laughs> change your life, dog. Change, change. You got to, you got to go to uh, McDonald's. Get that right. sprite. Now McDonald's sprite. Everybody know that. That's the toxic. I'm telling you, it's got tier. Oh, for sure. It's got tier. They're Dr Pepper good too. It's got tier. Uh, all their sodas good. I don't know what y'all putting in there. Beverages. Can you send me some? 
Yeah. Please. They, they need to make their own brand. Happy with me too. You imagine a McDonald's Sprite brand. Yeah, it's just regular it? ass Sprite. Uh, happy birthday, Grimace. The Grimace shape. I know y'all been seeing them. I didn't. I haven't had one yet. I don't even know if you can get them anymore. They don't have them anymore. Because I never got one either, bro. I was trying to. They had it for like a week. It was a purple shape. What is it? like? Bro, I don't know, but it was trending. That's all I knew. Uh, yeah. It was trending. Had people out there acting like they was dead. Like they was dead. Yeah, that was crazy. Had people out there acting Happy like, birthday, Grimace. Yeah. That's what it was. Shout Laid out, out on the canvas. <laughs> Shout out McDonald's. Stupid ass. Shout out McDonald's, for real, Shout yo. Out Shout out McDonald's, man. I had McDonald's two days ago. I like to say I eat healthy. I do. But it's something about that. Double bacon quarter pounder with that twenty piece nugget. That's yeah, what you I, get. I, I, bro, my McDonald's order is disgusting. So I eat I it. So I have McDonald's for my cheat meal every Friday. I eat healthy the rest of the week. Don't judge me. But it's a double quarter pounder with cheese, twenty nuggets, large fries, and a large Dr Pepper. Bro, for my one cheat meal a week, bro. That'll do it. And I, bro, I'm That'll telling you, I'm, t- I'm telling you, bro. My cheat. I mean, look, I'm I'm maintaining two ninety. So you feel me at the end? Of, and after the Friday workout. Everybody you to, 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 to catch up to the amount of calories that you burn, you're gonna be tired from eating. Bro. I'm not even trying to. I'm not. Look, I don't gotta justify nothing because this shit good. But <laughs> but but let me tell you that that's the cheat meal of all cheat meals, and there's a reason why it hasn't deviated in a in a grill. That's been real. it for a while. It's been your main meal. Been my main cheat meal for a minute. Cheat meal. I mean, like, of course, I switch it up. Sometimes I go pizza. Sometimes I yeah. go like. I be that pizza, bro. I got a yeah. problem. Like Friday after lift, like Word. I go home, hop on the game. Mm. You know, he, you be on the game and you like, man, it's seven o'clock. Yeah, straight to DoorDash. Hell yeah! It's like, ah. like, like, bro, whatever it comes to mind. But bro, it's been pizza these past four weeks, bro. Word. I will buy that pizza, bro. <laughs> They're like, it's bad. How, how much pizza you eat? Bro, it's bad. Bro. I'm not gonna lie, like, to like. We're talking about fat, right? So, hey, Little see, Caesars, I, I right? Been, I've gone crazy before. Little Caesars, Little Caesars, right? Tight. Yeah. So not the basic five dollar hot. Well, actually, they up the prices though. We're not gonna talk about that. Damn. But anyway, they got like this deep dish pizza. Word. Little Caesars. I don't know if y'all had it before. Tight shit. Bro, it's gas, bro. It is gas, like bro. You get a large, medium. I'm talking about top five. Like it's like eight slices like this. Bet. Bro, I will sit there and kill that whole pizza. Bro, that's not even bad. Bro, I would kill that piece. Square? You like, kill? Will you kill more than one? Square deep dish piece. Yeah, that sounds. Will, will you take out more than one? See, I will say, uh, I haven't recently because I had to control myself. But it, so. it is times like, <laughs> bro, I'm not gonna lie. Like, you get in that mode, you like, uh. and before you know it, you you scraping <laughs> the box like, <laughs> like you playing the game. He like, Hell. oh, <laughs> shit. Hey, whatever. Look, hey, whatever. <laughs> real. I'll be, bro. Saying, you know, my favorite things with it, yeah, nah, listen, the two pizza days I've seen them, I've been a part of them. I was 350 at one point, yeah, or yeah, I was out in the past five years, now nah, the past eight years, like high school and college, I've weighed as much as 358 was not, like most I ever weighed, and as little as 263. Yeah, hey, yeah, I've had a 90 pounds. Yeah, for I mean, real. That's crazy. You know what I mean, bro? But when did you, when, when were you 50, 353? 358? Uh, like after ACL surgery, right before I came back. Oh, that would make sense. You, couldn't, yeah. couldn't you run. can't do nothing. Yeah. Run for like seven months. Dude, so yeah. Nobody told me that, like, hey, bro, slow down. You're going to add up. You feel me? And then <laughs> the them calories just added up about a thousand, about a hundred thousand. <laughs> <for real. laughs> but, like, nah, bro, I've been 350. And then during camp, Sophomore year, just because you know, wasn't taking care of business, wasn't staying on top of the nutrition and everything like that. I looked, I looked at the scale, I was like, Oh, shit, I'm 260 something, that's not gonna cut it. I was at 280 in like a month, yeah. But that's crazy, I mean, you know. When you, when you, when you, when you a big dude weight. at heart, oh no, listen, when you a big dude what? at heart, you, <laughs> I, crazy, I'm 293 this morning, I could be 310 tomorrow. If I had that's, to be. That's what I'm no, saying. 100%, though. I could easily that's be 3 Y'all are machines, man. That's y'all thanks. y'all linemen are machines. You just put down a whole bunch of pizza, a whole bunch of salty food, drink a bunch of water, and you're going to be there. My roommate was a lineman. That motherfucker would get three meals from Biscuitville. Saying. And that Biscuitville will put the weight on, too. Absolutely. Because yeah. right, I'm the same way. Like, I weigh in 305. Like, I finish the workout like 295, 96. Yeah. And I'll come back next day, I'll be 308. Like, so you water and food, bro. Yeah. You weighing every day? 
every day. Oh, every day. Right. And like the way our like system works, we got an accountability system. Like the guys who got to like really lose for real. Yeah. When like you don't make weight, you on the elliptical, you doing extra cardio, you running like oh doing extra gosh. stuff like, and it's like mandatory. You know, obviously you got to do extra work to get better, of course. Yeah. But like the weight loss, like it's just like you on the stairmaster. Oh my goodness. <laughs> dripping. Elliptical, dripping, like, yeah. and plus that you know that football stuff, that weight is serious at the college level. Yeah, for, for sure. Like you're, you're, dare I say, like, ten percent of your total value as a player is determined by what the scale says. Right, it makes yeah. a difference for real. It definitely does. It makes a difference. Playing at two ninety five versus two ninety is a difference. No. Two ninety to two eighty five is a big difference. Five pounds I'm, make it. And I'm, I'm trying to play at two eighty five this year. I'm not trying to play at two ninety five, three hundred because. I be getting tired and shit. But it's real. You feel me? That's real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I get tired as hell. But when I get out there at 285, man, you couldn't tell me I'm not down Superman. A whole different beast. Until the until you know my roommate Cranes hit me sick, gigantic Viking motherfucker. <laughs> until my roommate Cranes come knock me on my ass, boy. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> right, that is funny. Bro. But but like, it makes a difference. That little bit. Makes a big difference for sure. Five pounds, five pounds. Hell yeah, boy! It's like it's, it's like taking thing. a whole five pound plate just off of you. That's really real though. It's a lineman thing. You know what I mean? Bruh. Couldn't imagine it. It's a lineman thing. It is a lineman. You feel the difference? Because I will say, like, especially to my teammates, you come in way in. That skill say you heavy, and it's a it's a run day. Mm. You already know what type of day it is. Yeah, but let it be like a heavy lift day. I like to be heavy. And if you light on the lift day, you let, bro. Mm. It's a bad lift day. It's a bad lift day. Bro. <laughs> yeah, feel like your feel like your eye sockets is just hollow. You know what I mean? Like you just going, you just existing. You got no like. You're just a person. You're just a bag of flesh and bones at that point. That's real. That's <laughs> when you, that's you right, light bro, on like, the lift day, bro, like it's if you know, you know. Yeah. Like that's really what it is. Like you so, can't speak unless you really experienced it. Like. You know. yeah. You can't really relate. It's crazy though. So, every yeah. game we play though, shoot, man. Listen, what's the what's the most out of pocket, like fat boy shit you ever did, bro? So, <laughs> I feel like I can say a couple. Like, but like there was a point in college, pandemic wise. So, <laughs> at Duke, we opened an insomnia. I think. Around 2020, 2021. Mm. So, like, we were supposed to play y'all back then. For real? Oh, we actually were. Yeah, we actually we were, were supposed to play, to play y'all in 2020. It's my freshman happened. year. Yeah. Hell yeah. Actually, I forgot about that. Yeah. That's a sidebar. That's crazy, though. That's, that's, I forgot about that. That's a, that's a whole, like, that's a football player moment if you've ever seen it. Like, it's <laughs> crazy. That, yeah, now nah, we, we were supposed to play y'all. It was on the schedule. Like, it's crazy. Dang. Anyway, hold on. All right. So back with pandemic. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they had to stay in the hotel, the Washington Duke Word. at Duke. We had a nice hotel. Our food card was connected to the hotel, like diners, mm. restaurants. So we can go down, whatever. And our food card, like for every reason, pandemic, you know how pandemic was. They were getting stimulus checks, like different relief fund checks, like for different schools you can fill out. Fine. So our food card was the same way. Sure. It's like we swapping the food card every day. But there was a point, like, I would always go in this mode. Whatever, breakfast, lunch. I'd always eat two dinners. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> I, it was bad. Like, in the spring, I would eat two dinners. I would get an order of 10 bonus wings and some fries and whatever else I wanted, whether mm. it was a wrap or, like, some other stuff we had. But then it got bad to the point, like, I was getting <laughs> insomnia after. So oh, I, my gosh. <laughs> so, so I had it timed. Like, yeah. it's like, because they deliver. It's like, I would order on the app. So like, I time it. I eat my food so I could walk out the restaurant, grab my insomnia, it just keep going up to the room. Bro, it was bad. Like, it got to the point, like... It's a routine. My mom texted me, because, like, I still had my account connected to hers, whatever, because of Word. the bank cannot... She said, quit buying cookies. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was one time, I said, you need to quit buying cookies. I said, what you mean? She sent me how much I spent. I was like, I was like, you might be right, mom. Like, Hell yeah. It's bad. Yeah. But that, that was like that 20, you know, pandemic... Pandemic body is a whole different. Pandemic body was crazy. Oh, different thing. I was pudgy, but it was bad though. Like, and I was I was the heaviest I ever been. Hell like, yeah, I was a chunky type. Type. How old were y'all during the pandemic? Because I was a sophomore. I was when it started. I, as soon as it started, y'all would have been a freshman. 
I lost half my senior year of high school. Yeah. That's right. I left. Shut up. Wait, are we in the same grade? No, because I, I, I was in my freshman year of college. Oh, yeah. That's why I'm old as shit. Yeah. Christopher Columbus. <laughs> I call him Christopher Columbus whenever he's traveling, and I'll be like, what you on? Because he just be exploring shit. I, I'd be all over. You know, it's funny. I ain't told you. You know, my middle name is Christopher. I'm dead. <laughs> Let me tell you. Yeah, bro. Damn, bro. Man. That's funny. That's crazy, dog. Bro. We was supposed to play, y'all. That's crazy. I didn't even think about that. Nah, no cap. No it's, cap. That just didn't happen. It just didn't happen. I left school on a Tuesday. Well, I don't even know. I always say it was a Tuesday because Tuesdays was like the worst day of the week. Sounds about I don't right. even know if it was a Tuesday right. or not. But it sounded like it would be. It sounded like it would be a, yeah. like a bullshit-ass Tuesday. Left cl- left school, and I ain't never went back. I came here, like, after that. That was it. I couldn't imagine that. Sat in the crib, played 2K20. I started yeah, 2K20. I played so much 2K20 back in the day. I started in March, and I almost hit Legend. <laughs> Just from park, game, from park yeah. games. No rec games at all, bro. We played... So much park in 2K20. I had a scoring machine built, bro. It was nasty. <laughs> Lethal, dog. I could step across half court green. Couldn't nobody do nothing about it. That just that, that reminds that's me, tough, bro. bro. That's bad. That's how back in the day, man. That 2K20, 2K20 was really what it was because of COVID. Everybody was on the game. Hell bro. yeah. Everybody, everybody was on the game. Cause I didn't even really play the game like that for real. And like pandemic hit, I was on the game. We was yeah. playing 2K and GTA. 10 hours and four nights. I was playing four night two OD. Get on at like noon. Get off at like 4 a.m. Nah, for real. <laughs> nah, for real. For real. Uh, he be like, oh, dang. I've been up all day. Oh, well. Sleep. Yeah. <laughs> wake up, whatever. Back on the game. Hell yeah. Bro, that's crazy. I put my I put my Xbox through hell back then. Oh, yeah. Hell, dog. Me too, bro. Goodness. That's funny. I was working a lot over the pandemic. Word. Working out. Word. Yeah, I, I'm about I, say. I was ripped as hell during the pandemic. Mm. You know, I was I a wasn't. sophomore, so I was you know little still, but... Back then, I was ripped as hell. Pushing the pandemic out. workouts was crazy. Yes. We all went right. through it. Just trying making to sneak on the field. Bro, like, breaking into the field. For real. To get on that. Get some work in. Get kicked out. out by the police. I got I got so many Snapchats on my phone of cops pulling up to where I was at to kick me off the field because I was yeah. trying to work. I was trying to get better. Because so we was doing gym workouts. Like one of, my, uh, one of my boys, his pops was one of our coaches, actually. Mm. And they had one rack in their garage. Word. So like it'd be like four or five of us over there every single day. Hell yeah, yeah. Bro, I'm over there on YouTube doing hit workouts. I'm just oh, making I'm stuff YouTube up. Workouts. Do. Right, bro, I'm looking at something like, All right, what can I do? Cardio. Cardio was cooked. I couldn't do nothing with that cardio, but I was tired, boy. Absolutely not. That's Five crazy. Push-up workouts. Ab what workouts. Is, nah, no cap, All though. that. Yeah, I remember it. What the hell are they doing out there, yo? I'm sorry, but th- this this groundskeeper crew they doing it. They right. they getting after it today. Yeah. They gonna pearl the bushes. They getting right. They getting They're right committed. for sure. They about to pearl these bushes. But we just <laughs> but, but, but we just but we just working at the same time. You feel me? It's all good, man. Hey, but we've been in here for an hour and ten minutes. You That's feel crazy. me? We've been spitting the heavy thoughts. We've gone through so much, man. I feel like I got closer to both of y'all, even though we Absolutely. spend damn near every day together. Yeah. We've only been, we've only chopped it up really chill a couple, a couple times, times for real, man. But I feel like, you know, today we all got closer and there's a there's a certain okay. bond that we're going to be able to come back to this. And, you know, this, this might be the start of something great. Who knows, man? So, DC, my brother, Ian, my yep. brother as well. I want to thank you guys for stopping by, man. I want to thank you guys for coming in, you know. Letting us know what thoughts is weighing on you the most. You feel me? That's real. Appreciate so, you having me, man. Yeah, likewise. Yeah. To the council, appreciate y'all, man. Yeah. I'm going to throw everybody's social media down in the description below. You feel me? Go check everybody's shit out. And uh, as always, your boy John, peace out. All right, y'all.